topic two, atoms, elements, molecules, ions, and compounds. Early in the 19th century, John Dalton developed atomic theory. His theory explained the best available experimental data at that time. His theory has been modified since then with the discovery of other data, but his work was the initial groundwork that we will examine first. The postulates of Dalton's atomic theory. Number one, all matter is composed of individual atoms. An atom is an extremely small particle of matter that retains its identity during chemical reactions. Later it was found that indivisible was untrue. Yes, atoms make up matter and retain its identity, but it's divisible. There are three particles of an atom, protons, neutrons, and electrons, which we'll discuss later. Second postulate, an element is a type of matter composed of only one kind of atom. Each atom of a given element having the same properties. Mass is one such property, thus the atoms of a given element have a characteristic mass. Yes, all atoms of an element are identical, however, mass is not necessarily the same. Atoms have different isotopes that have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons and hence a different mass. You must remember that the number of protons gives the identity of an atom. All atoms of a particular species has the same number of protons but they can have a different number of neutrons hence a different number of different mass. A compound is a type of matter composed of atoms of two or more elements chemically bonded, uh, <clears throat> combined in a fixed proportion. The relative numbers of any two kinds of atoms in a compound occur in simple ratios. Example, water, for example, consists of hydrogen and oxygen in a two to one ratio. There's two hydrogens for every one oxygen for all molecules of water. Number four, a chemical reaction consists of a rearrangement of atoms present in the reactant substance to give new chemical combinations present in the substances formed by a reaction. In other words, a new chemical with different properties is formed. Example, solid sodium mixed with chlorine gas forms a new substance, salt, with totally different properties from the starting materials. You could take sodium solid, which is highly explosive in water, chlorine gas, which is extremely poisonous, combine the two and form a new substance, sodium chloride, table salt, something that we eat every day. Atoms are not created, destroyed, or broken into smaller particles by any chemical reactions. It's the fifth postulate of Dalton's atomic theory. Once again, this one fails because of the previous point that there are divisible, okay, there are some other particles that make up the atom itself. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's talk about the structure of the atom. Although Dalton postulated that atoms were indivisible, experiments at the beginning of the 1900s show that atoms themselves consist of particles and that they were divisible. Experiments on Ernest Rutherford in 1910 show that the atom was mostly empty space. These experiments show that the atom consists of two kinds of particles, a nucleus, the atom's central core, which is positively charged and contains most of the atom's mass, and one or more of electrons. Electrons are very light, negatively charged particles that exist in the region around the atom's positively charged nucleus. So basically what we have is in the center is what we call the nucleus, which is positively charged. Then you have a lot of space between the nucleus and the outer, outer uh, perimeter of the atom, which is where electrons are that are very light and circle around the nucleus itself.
In 1897, British physicist J.J. Thompson conducted a series of experiments that showed that atoms were not individual particles, but instead made of smaller particles. From his experiments, Thompson calculated the ratio of the electronic's mass, Me, to its electric charge, E. But he could not obtain either the mass or the charge separately, only the ratio. In 1909, U.S. physicist Robert Milliken attained the charge on the electron, which was 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So he was able to do what Thompson could not do. These two discoveries by Milliken and Thompson combined provided us with the electron's mass, which is 9.109 times 10 to the negative third, uh, 31st kilograms which is more than 1,800 times smaller than the mass of the lightest atom, hydrogen, thereby proving that the atom is made up of smaller particles. These experiments show that the electron was indeed a subatomic particle of the atom. The combination of all the experiments since the late 1800s showed evidence of subatomic particles. This particular experiment just nailed it on the head. The nuclear model of the atom as we see it today came from Ernest Rutherford, a British physicist who put forth the idea of the nuclear model of the atom in 1911 based on experiments done in his laboratory by Hans Geiger and Ernest Morrison. Rutherford's famous gold leaf experiment gave credibility to the theory that the majority of the mass of the atom was concentrated in a very small nucleus. Positively charged alpha particles were directed at the metal foil. Only one out of 8,000 were deflected, indicating that the nucleus was extremely small and positively charged. Only those alpha particles that directly hit the nucleus were deflected. The rest passed through. Therefore, most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus. However, the nucleus occupies only a very small portion of the space in the atom. The diameter of the atom is approximately 100 picometers, while the diameter of the nucleus is approximately 0 0.001 picometers. For comparison, if an atom was 3 miles in diameter, the nucleus would be the size of a golf ball. The nucleus of an atom is composed of two different kinds of particles. We have protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which are neutral. An important property of the nucleus is its positive electrical charge. A proton is a nuclear particle having a positive charge equal to that of the electron, or unit charge, in a mass more than 1800 times that of the electron. It is for this reason that we refer to the hydrogen atom as a pure proton. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is referred to as its atomic number Z and gives the identity of the element. All species that have the same number of protons have the same properties. For a neutral species, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So for hydrogen with an atomic number of 1, neutral species, you would have one proton and one electron. For sodium, atomic number 11 means you have 11 protons and 11 electrons in a neutral species. Chlorine, atomic number 17, neutral species, you have 17 protons and 17 electrons. For charged species, the number of protons does not equal the number of electrons. The number of protons remains constant in, the species, constant in the species. So if you're talking about a particular uh, element, all the species will have the same number of protons. However, the number of electrons can vary, and that's what dictates the charge of the species. Chlorine minus the chloride ion has an atomic number of 17, which tells me it has 17 protons, but in this case, 
since it has that negative charge, it's telling me it has an additional electron over the number of protons, in this case, 18 electrons. Sodium plus. Since it has a plus, that's telling me that it has more protons and electrons by one. The atomic number is 11, so I know it has 11 protons, but in this case it has 10 electrons. A positive charge means more protons and electrons. A negative charge on the species means more electrons than protons. An element is a substance whose atoms all have the same atomic number, Z. The number of protons defines the identity of an atom and can be found in a periodic table, a large number in the top of an element box. For example, here I have the hydrogen box from the periodic table, and you see a large one, telling me it has one atomic number, meaning one proton. The neutron is a new nuclear particle having a mass almost identical to the proton, but no electric charge. The charge of the nucleus comes from the number of protons. Protons have a positive charge. The atoms may have different masses because of the different number of neutrons, which gets us to the term called isotopes. Summary of the masses and charges of the three fundamental particles are below. Electron it's 9.109 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. Charge is a negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19, and it's outside the nucleus. Proton is 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27. Charge is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 9, which is the opposite in charge of the electron, and it's inside the nucleus. Since these charges are identical but opposite in charge, we give a relative charge of negative 1 for the electron and positive 1 the proton. Neutron is identical in mass of the proton, uh, but it has no charge, and it's also located in the nucleus. So the majority of the mass is inside the nucleus with a lot of space uh, between the nucleus and the outer uh, arrangement of electrons. The mass number A is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So your mass number A is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, or another way of looking at it, your Z, which is your number of protons, plus your number of neutrons. So how many neutrons does sodium-23 have? Sodium-23 is giving me the mass number of sodium. So A is equal to 23, and Z is equal to 11, periodic table, atomic number on sodium on the periodic table. So A is equal to Z plus number of neutrons. Plug in my numbers, 23 for A. Z is 11 plus number of neutrons. So I now subtract 11 from both sides. And it tells me that I have 12 neutrons in sodium 23. Now a different species of sodium could have a different number of neutrons, but the number of protons will remain the same. A nuclide is an atom characterized by a definite atomic number and mass number. The shorthand notation for the nuclide consists of its symbol with atomic number Z as a subscript on the left and its mass number A as a superscript on the left. In other words, you're looking at this capital E, which is your atomic symbol for your element. Uh, a superscript is your top mass number, which is your number of protons and number uh, of neutrons, and your subscript Z, which is your number of protons. So for sodium-23, we would write this as 23-11 sodium. So the 11 there is telling me I have 11 protons. The 23 is the total of protons and neutrons. So if I subtract 23 and 11, that give me 12 neutrons. And since there's no charge on the sodium, we know that it has the same number of electrons as protons, which would be 11 electrons. So 11 protons, 12 neutrons, 11 electrons. If I had a charged sodium atom, 
it looks similar except I have the plus charge, but that plus now is an indication that I don't have the same number of protons and electrons. Since I have a positive charge, that means I have an additional proton over an electron, so I have one less electron than I have on my atomic number. So in this case, I would have 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 10 electrons. What is the nuclei symbol for a nucleus that consists of 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and 17 electrons? Well, first off, I have to figure out what is the element. Well, where am I going to get that from? Well, that number of protons tells me an identity of the species. So I look on the periodic table for atomic number 17, meaning 17 protons. If I do that, I see that the atomic number, that's the atomic number for chlorine. So it tells me the species is chlorine, Cl, for my E and my nuclei. Next, <clears throat> I know that the atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And I know the number of protons, and they gave me the number of neutrons. So if I add the two together, it would tell me my atomic mass number, which is 35. So my nuclide looks 35 at the top, 17 at the bottom, and Cl. Next thing I have to look at is there a charge in the species. Well, we can see that my number of electrons and number of protons are the same, so it's a neutral species, so there is no charge. So number of electrons equal to number of protons, therefore a neutral species. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following nucleus? So I have 80, 35, bromine minus. From the 35, I know that I have 35 protons. That's the atomic number for bromine. Now, if I subtract my number of protons from my mass number, I can figure out my number of neutrons. So I have 80 for my mass number. That's given to me. And I have my number of protons. If I do the math, subtract my 35 from both sides. And I see that I have 45 neutrons. So I now know the number of protons, know the number of neutrons, and now i got to figure out the number of electrons. Since there's a charge on this species, I have to account for the number of protons and number of electrons not being equal. Since it's a negative number, that tells me that I'm going to have more electrons than I have protons. So I know I have 35 electrons plus one additional electron. This is telling me that I have one additional electron, which tells, tells me that I have a total of 36 electrons. Note the number of electrons are greater than the number of protons, therefore we know we have a negatively charged species. You should be able to do homework 9 and 10 uh, from the information on this video.